The Lord has manifested forth his glory. O come, let us worship. Our insurance psalm is number 89, verses 1 to 7, found on page 443. Let us say this together. My song shall be always of the body kindness of the Lord, and my mind will I ever be shown by faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said, loving kindness shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever, and set up thy throne from one generation to another. O Lord, the very heaven shall praise thy wondrous works, and thy faithfulness in the congregation of the holy ones. For who is he in the skies that shall be compared unto the Lord? And what is he among the gods that shall be like unto the Lord? God is very greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and to be had in reverence above all them that are around Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, wherever that be. My song shall be all the way of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I ever be shown by faithfulness from one generation to another. Let us pray together the call of the pure. Almighty God, out of whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only O Christ through the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect, Epistle, and Gospel for the commemoration of the Transfiguration of the Lord are found beginning on page 289. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who on the holy mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses thy well beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured, mercifully grant unto us such a vision of his divine majesty, that we, being purified and strengthened by thy grace, may be transformed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament lesson is written in the 34th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the 29th verse. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not show that the skin of his face, did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, 
and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the Old Testament reading is Psalm 84, verses 1 to 7, found beginning on page 437. Page 437, Psalm 84, verses 1 to 7. As you remain seated, I invite you to say this together with me. Oh, how lovely are thy dwellings, thou Lord of hosts! My soul hath a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found her in house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Even my altar is, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be always praising thee. Blessed are the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the pilgrim ways, who going through the veil of misery use it for a well. Yea, the early rain covereth it with blessings. They go from strength to strength, and the God of gods appeareth every one of them in heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall, and Amen. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the second epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the 16th verse. We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in, the, in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Here ends the epistle. <laughs> The gradual psalm in Psalm 84, verses 8 to 13, found on page 438. Page 438, Psalm 84, verses 8 to 13. Let us stand and say this. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For one day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the God. For the Lord God is a life and defense. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing shall he withhold from them that lead a godly life. O Lord God of hosts, blessed is the man that putteth his trust. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with them, with him. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, 
Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, from who for us and for our salvation, came down from and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Lord. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. From this evening's epistle, from the second letter of St. Peter. You will do well to pay attention to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. In the home where I lived as a child in St. John, there was a very small room. In fact, it was so small it really didn't constitute a full room. It was more a bit of a, a cubby hole under a stairway. A room which, in spite of its incredibly tiny size, was home to the largest assortment of odds and ends that you can imagine. Into that tiny space, we kept all those things that we no longer used, but couldn't really convince ourselves to part with. Those things which had very little part in everyday life, but were still somehow, some for some reason, kept around, just in case, just in case one day we might need them again. Several old trunks were found in that tiny space, filled with the kinds of things that you usually find in old trunks. Long forgotten toys, which were missing pieces or had long lost their appeal. Clothes that were long out of fashion, that is, if they'd ever been in fashion, in the first place. Old rusty skates and the unusual assortment of worn out gloves and sports equipment. Broken hockey sticks and well used baseball bats were somehow stuffed into this space around those trunks. With a great variety of other broken and unused tables and stands and picture frames in whatever small spaces were still available. Anything that we had that wasn't good enough to keep in some other part of the house some place where people might actually see it, inevitably ended up being thrown into this tiny space until you could barely see past the first foot or so. 
Well, every once in a while, someone would have the incredibly bright idea that this room had to be cleaned up. And they would start the task very systematically by clearing everything out of that room so that some hard decisions could be made. Decisions about what should stay and what had to be thrown away. Hours would be spent at the job. Until the, by, by the time everything was done, all that stuff which had been so systematically removed from that room was just as systematically brought back into that room. Maybe ordered around a little bit better than it had been before. But in the end, very little, virtually nothing, had been removed. Now maybe you have a similar kind of room in your house. It's the place where you can hide all the things that you want to hide, all the things that you think you need to hide. A room where you can just shut the door and forget all about it. Until the next time that you open the door and the light floods back into the room, and all that, is, that has lain hidden all that time becomes obvious and apparent and unavoidable. When it's there in the dark, it doesn't really bother us. But once the light gets in, then it's there for all to see. Now imagine for just a moment that I'm not really talking about a small cubbyhole under a stairwell in the house that I grew up. Imagine for a moment that really what I'm talking about are the kinds of places that we carve out in our souls. So bear with me for just a moment. I think that in a sense, each one of us have those private small spaces, those private thoughts, maybe those personal axes that we want to grind, or those half-suppressed grudges or unresolved hurts, maybe those long-harbored resentments, or those things that we should be doing that we're not doing, or those things that we shouldn't be doing that we are doing, those long-forgotten moments and memories that we desperately try to keep to ourselves. We store them away in our soul because we don't want to think about them, or even worse still, because we really don't want to do anything about them. And we keep them hidden away in the dark because we don't want other people to know that we have them. But we still can't bring ourselves to throw them away. Maybe every once in a while, we resolve to clean things up, to make some fundamental changes, to work on forgiveness, to work on mercy, to work on God's peace, to clear out those things that we've been hiding in our personal storage rooms. And maybe we start out with some enthusiasm. We clear everything up. But I suspect that gradually, before we're done, we put most everything back inside. Perhaps in a different order, but probably with very little change. And there we keep them, until something causes us to open the door and to look in. And when our eyes adjust to the light, the light that we've been trying to keep out of that corner of our souls, we recognize those things that we've been trying to forget. Trying to forget them by keeping them stored away in the dark. Now each year on August the 6th, the church celebrates the Feast of the Transfiguration, the story of Christ's transfiguration on the mountain. Each year we hear of that moment when the majesty and the power and the glory of God were revealed to Peter and James and John on the mountain. That moment when the brilliance of God's own nature, the blinding light of God himself was revealed in the person of Jesus, the Son of God incarnate, with Moses and Elijah alongside, showing how Jesus was the fulfillment of all that God had ever promised. It is then, and it is now, one of the great stories of affirmation. The voice of the Father saying to the apostles near the end of Christ's ministry, what the voice of the Father said to Christ alone at the very beginning of his ministry. This is my beloved Son. This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. A word, 
A word perhaps that those same apostles will cling to not so very long afterwards, when that same son, that same beloved son, is arrested and tried and beaten and crucified. When everything that they had ever hoped for had suddenly gone wrong. That moment when fear and doubt and despair threaten to overwhelm them. And perhaps it is a word that they themselves will cling to many years later, long after the resurrection, when they too will experience suffering and persecution and even death. Perhaps in one way, the story of the transfiguration was for them, and I hope it is for us as well. A story that tells us that when things suddenly go sideways, when life gets hard, when the pain just gets to be too much, when doubt and fear creep into our hearts, and we begin to imagine that there is no hope. Perhaps in that moment, we also hear the voice of the fall. The voice that reminds us that we too are beloved, that in Jesus Christ we are not forgotten, that in Christ we always have hope. But the annual commemoration of the Transfiguration also reminds me that there are parts of my life, whether I want to admit it or not, and maybe parts of your lives as well, <clears throat> that need to be transformed, parts that need to be transfigured, parts that need to be reshaped and renewed. Perhaps that we can only see clearly but we can only see things as they really are, rather than how we imagine them to be. When we let the light of Christ shine into all the corners of our hearts. Perhaps the story of Christ's transfiguration reminds us that there are some things in our souls that will need to be discarded. And some things that will need to be replaced, and some things that will need to be repaired, and that just shoving things away in the dark, in some corner of our souls where no one else will ever see them, will never change those things that need to be changed. Only Christ can do that. And that will only happen when we're willing to open the doors of honesty and truth and forgiveness, and let the light shine in. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power this day and forevermore. Amen. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whose spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven of the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. We offer this holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of the Almighty God, and thanksgiving for the manifestation of Christ's divine nature on the mountain of the Transfiguration. And for the words of hope and affirmation we see in the voice of the Father. Words of hope and affirmation that we hear in our hearts and minds. Let us pray that we might let that same light shine into our souls, that by God's grace we might be transformed and transfigured, that we might grow day by day into the image of the Christ. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, saying, Lord, in your mercy. For grace to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that we may share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our Archbishop, and Paul, our missionary at Bishop McAllister College in Uganda. For Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Po in Ghana. For our sisters and brothers in the parish of Marysville, in the parish of Stanley, and for all our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the Anglican Communion, for the bishops gathered together at Lambeth, for our fellow Christians everywhere, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity, that preserved from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. For the First Nations, Inuit and Métis people of Canada, for all those who struggle every day for healing and reconciliation, for those who cope with the effects of systemic racism and abuse, for all those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened and endangered by the climate change crisis, and for a collective will to use all our natural resources carefully and responsibly. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Taiwan. For all the members of the Canadian Armed Forces as they serve at home and away to bring peace and safety to troubled regions. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love, that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for the sick, especially Aaron, Aidan, Amanda, Andrew, Anna, Barbara, Bernie and Paul, Bliss, Brenda, Brian, Byron, Carol, Charles, Christopher, Connie, Debbie, Delta, Dick, Dorothy, Edward, Elaine, Eleonora, Eleanor, Elsie, Eva, Floyd, Fran, Gail, George, Gerald and Elsie, Greg, Griffin, Helen, Irene, Jack, Jackie, Jake, Jeannie, Joanne, Joyce, Judy, Karen, Kermit, Ken, Kim, Lillian, Lisa, Liz, Marilyn, Martin, Marvin, Mary, May, Michael, Megan, Millie, Mindy, Misa, Owen, Pam, Pat, Paul, Pius, Rietta, Reggie, Real, Robert, Rose, Roy, Ruth, Sam, Sarah and Tim, Sarah, Shauna, Sherry, Sue, Sylvie, Tammy, Ted, Terry, Thea, and Wayne. And for those who are responsible for their care, Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways. Courtney, Georgia, Vanda, Carol, Aaron, Ethel, Lorraine, Lois, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Donna, Shirley, Phyllis, Kay, Sheridan, Maria, Morgan, Stephanie, Mackenzie, Michael, Richard, Dale and Tammy, Darlene, Sydney, Frankie, Michelle, Mitchell, Philip, Tina, Becky, Aaron and the Brooks family, Noah and Michelle, 
Leanne, Kim, and Michael, and those working in long-term care facilities. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, especially Joan Bergstrom, Ross Galbraith, Lee Stickles, Mary Lou Beckett, Martha O'Donnell, Linda Hodgson, Alda Yerksa, Anthony George, and Ivan Michaud. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And may thy perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. He that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are not in charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life on the commandment of God and want to commence forth in his holy way, draw near to faith and take this holy sacrament of comfort and make a humble confession to Almighty God. Make we kneel. <laughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and weakness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by God, word and deed, against thy blindness. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the business life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me, right, so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father. Who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercy to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table of mercy, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs into thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body. That our souls wash through this most precious blood, and that we may be ever more dwell in him and be in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Christ died for you, and feed on him your heart by faith with them. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for you to preserve the body of the soul of the last of the and he not in your heart by faith with them. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which is given for you to preserve the body of the soul of the last of the this love that Christ died for you, he not in your heart by faith with them. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you to preserve the body and soul of everlasting, take it in this and know that Christ died for you, and feed on him your heart on faith with the Spirit. The 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given for you to preserve the body of the soul of everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you to preserve the body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this and notice that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you, preserve the body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this and notice that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you to preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this and moment that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you to preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this and moment that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given to you, preserve your body and soul of your everlasting life. Take and eat this and remember that Christ died for you, and do not be your heart by faith with that. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you, preserve your body and soul of your everlasting life. Take and eat this and remember that Christ died for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given to you, preserving the body and soul of the everlasting life. Take a piece of the moment that Christ died for you. Do not be your heart, God's faith, with that. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given to you, preserving the body and soul of the everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and fitting sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounty, duty, and service, not make our merits, but pardon in our faces, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory. World of thy name. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you all. Amen. I'm going to invite you folks just to be seated for just a moment. Uh, you may work your poll in the last uh, number of uh, weeks we've been advertising our vacation Bible school. These great folks over here are the folks that are going to be leading that. I invited Samuel Landry to uh, just uh, give you a bit of an update on what's going to be happening this week. If you know of any kids in that age range, um, uh, grandkids or uh, neighbor's kids and such, please let us know. And also, if you're thinking about volunteering, it's a chance to do so. So, Samuel, welcome to uh, Getting St. Mary's. And I'm going to invite you to speak about the program and maybe to uh, to uh, introduce your teacher. Well, I think Father Kevin has pretty well said it all, but um, I'm Samuel, and I work the youth ministry in the church for all sin. Um, and I'm joined with by my wife Helen and by Matthew and Maddie, who are congregants at St. Paul's in Rothstein, uh, also members of our youth group. And so this week, from 9 o'clock until 2 o'clock, um, Monday through Friday, we are going to be offering uh, a time of learning, a play, and of worship for children in elementary school. So if you know anyone, please um, put them in our direction. And we really hope that this will be an opportunity to introduce children to our Lord, to his life and ministry, um, and to the life of worship that we share in the church. And um, on the very last day, on Friday, um, we're going to end at noon time instead of at 2 o'clock with a barbecue. And that's open to all of you folks. And I would encourage you, if you can, to come out and to, um, you know, I, I expect there will be some new faces, um, some new families who will take advantage of this vacation Bible school. And it's a great opportunity to meet them. Um, and welcome them to St. Mary's. So, yeah, thank you all for having us. Um, this week is a gift to the four of us, really. Um, we're grateful to be here, and we hope to, to minister with you all. Thank, thank you, Simon. We, we believe that it's a, it's a mutual gift, and it's certainly a gift to us, to the parish, and to the community as well. So please keep the Vacation Bible School uh, staff and kids and, and, uh, and volunteers in your prayers uh, this week. We're looking forward to, uh, to a great week starting on Monday morning. And if you don't get volunteers and you would like to be involved somehow, please speak to uh, Deacon Nicholas, who's coordinating our volunteer list. And uh, please speak to him if you want to be uh, a participant in some way. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen.